Howdy, BFLO Bart here, and welcome! Alright, get everything stabilized here. It is Wednesday night, it is 9 o'clock, and this is 8-30-2018. What we have in front of us is a blank empty project. And what we're going to talk about this evening is we'll start off with destruction. Destructible meshes. What the hell are they? How the hell do we make them? It used to be really, really simple. Let's go ahead and start getting set up here. So, I got nothing in my content. I'm going to go ahead and go to Add New, Add Feature or Content Pack. Let's be different. I always do third person. Let's try something a little bit differently. Uh, let's go with first person. Because it's already got a gun and we can play around with it. We can break stuff with the gun, right? So we're going to go ahead and add that to the project. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and add in, just for the heck of it, some starter content. Sure, I could have done all this whenever I first created a blank project. But just want to again show, if you didn't have that already in there, how you can actually add it to your project. Nice and simple, right? Now hurry up. i got all damn night for you. Are you just about ready yet? All right, so that is done. When you see that pop up, you know that you're done. All right, what we're going to do is tonight's drink of choice, by the way. Mountain Dew and coffee. And really quickly, I'm going to go ahead and place this wall into the scene and rotate them. So we can actually see it here. And let's go ahead and slide it on over and roughly center it up. Or exactly center it up. Move that kniffy out of the way. Always so much junk on my desk, so I need to start getting organized again. Again, like I was ever organized to begin with. Um, I try to be. Let's go ahead and move our character back a little bit. And let's go ahead and hit play. And... Because I'm stupid, I didn't change game mode override to first person game mode. And we're just going to do a quick save all. So, actually, I'm not even going to worry about saving the map just yet. So let's hit play. And you can see. Interesting. We has no balls. Okay. Well, let's try their map. Let's go to the first person maps. And don't save. And let's make sure we change our game mode override to first person game mode. And let's try hitting play. And of course, we're not shooting anything. I don't see the balls. But we're shooting. All right, so. You can see that this is a shooter, and for some reason, it's not showing the projectiles. Don't know why, so we're going to go ahead and save all on that. And before I continue any farther, I um, would like to say thank you to everybody who has made donations and tips and purchased the Simple Steam Multiplayer uh, template. Simple multiplayer, Steam template, whatever the, the protect, uh, correct name is. I change it like every other week. Um, thanks for all the donations and, and the stuff that has come in. I've ordered some stuff, which should be here tomorrow. And it's going to change the way the streams look a little bit. Because I'm going to be changing microphones. And that's not going to change the look. Um, I'm going to go with a Bluetooth or cordless headset so that I don't keep running over the damn cord. And pulling the headset off of my head while I'm trying to stream. So that might help, and I'm also going to be adding a camera so you can see this beautiful, sexy, handsome mug. So, just want to say thank you to everybody, and let you know ahead of time that tomorrow I'll be doing a couple test streams to set up some voice. I'm also going to be setting up a channel in Discord that is just for um, 
the live stream. So if anybody wants to come on board and start and talk as well and be part of the stream, I'll have a separate channel that I can invite people to and they will be guest appearances and or, or guest voices on the uh, the show. So describe more of that as we go. But let's get into the meat and taters of this uh, video and destructible meshes. Okay. It used to be that whenever you're creating a destructible mesh and it was quite easy. All you had to do was just click on a mesh and click on the details. Let's go ahead and find it in the browser as well. But right click on it and then select in here. Hmm, well, maybe not. Then right click on here and then just say make destructible mesh or create destructible mesh. And it's not here. It does not exist anymore. It has been taken out of the main system, but if we were to go to Edit and Plugins, and we search for Apex, we want Apex Destruction. Enable that and restart now. So it's going to take a couple seconds to go ahead and restart. I don't know why they did that, but at least the functionality is still there. You just have to go about finding it a different way. Okay, so I'm going to close that off. Let's go back to the map that we were on. First person example map. And now, let's see, we hit play and have that frickin' mouse cursor bug. So bear with me while I remedy that situation really quickly. Go into the blueprint for it, and I don't need the construction script. Get player view. I don't need any of that. We want the event graph. There's already bunches of stuff in there. We're not going to change any of that. All we're going to do is come over here and find an empty spot. Event begin play. I'm going to do it in the character instead of doing it in the map. That way it's universal. And then what I want to do is set input to game mode only. You've seen me do this before. It's annoying and it bothers me, so I'm going to put it in the character from now on. So we want to get player controller. And then we want to set show mouse cursor. Connector up right there, leave that unchecked. And now that should get rid of our mouse cursor bug. So when we hit play, we don't have to do anything else but just go in here and start shooting junk. So now, to make a destructible mesh, if we look at the item here, um, I'm going to click on, I'm just going to use this cube right here, the one meter cube, hit the magnifying glass, and now where it is right here, I'm going to right click on it and create destructible mesh. I know this is really complicated, but boop, and there we go. There's our destructible mesh. So it didn't modify the original one, it just made this new one. And if you explode, it's not going to do anything yet. So first thing we want to do is that, and let's do fracture mesh, and then we can blow it up. So we need to change a few settings. I haven't mastered all of this, so bear with me. Um, it's going to take a little bit of tweaking to get it the way you, you really want. So the damage amount on this first one, damage threshold, the damage amount which will cause a chunk to fracture or break free. We're going to leave it at one for right now to keep it nice and simple. Uh, damage spread. All, it basically is saying that um, the amount of radius at which it's going to spread. I'm actually going to change that to 1. Enable impact damage. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and add that in there. Impact damage. We're just going to leave that one alone for now. Um, you've got some custom impact resistance. I'm not going to change any of those. I'm not going to mess with any of these other settings right here. Going to leave them the way that they are. Now you can also come in here and do accumulate damage. So if the initial impact didn't break it, then 
it's going to add like a health system to it and once it reaches zero then it will go ahead and fracture so we definitely want to add that in there and the next thing I would suggest using this but I'm not for right now um, I don't really care for this one right here the pieces that break apart you can shoot them and or kick them or whatever and break them apart as well um, it will be a little bit taxing on, on most people's potatoes I mean uh, lower end computers that it may not work as well so yeah I'm gonna leave the rest of these alone for right now um, enable debris I'm going to turn that on as well so let's actually see what's happening with it let's try that um, random seed you can put a different number in there hit save and then we'll take a look at it in game and see what happens here I'm going to drag this over here in case we need to, and so when we make some modifications. Now you see it's created, you get your normal static mesh, and then now you have this new type called destructible mesh. So now you can actually drag that one into the game. And let's set that in here, and what the heck, let's go ahead and put it on top of another box. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down over here, and I'm going to simulate physics and yeah there's another setting you want to find where it's saying that um, let's see simulate physics nope oh, gotta find where the hell it is now um, So essentially, that whenever you first go in there, what'll happen is being that you're simulating physics to it. It, it let's hit play. You see, it went ahead and just fell apart on its own, and the chunks have physics to them as well. But we don't want it to automatically break before we do anything. So we simulate our physics. There we go. Hit that little arrow and uncheck start awake. No, you're not supposed to just blow apart you dumbass enable gravity simulate physics um, mass scale probably want to change some of the mass settings to it but it's not supposed to break when you first start off Let's actually move it up just a hair, make sure it's not actually sitting on the um, the item. So it's, it's actually hovering in the air, but there, we just blew it all to hell and back. So I don't know why it was crumbling, unless maybe it's because it was actually touching. So I'm going to un undo um, the snapping and lower it down a little bit and a little bit too much. How about now? Nope. So a lot of these settings you're going to end up having to tweak around a little bit and play with just to keep it from falling apart. You want to try a couple different things here. Um, but if I leave it in the air, it should have actually fallen down. And a little bit too squishy and too breakable. So if you come down here and look at your, your settings for it, then you want to try to set up the... Um, the weight or the mass linear dampening yeah see I've got gravity enabled no that's weird Okay, yeah, normally it's right here where I can actually just click on it and change the setting, add some weight to it. Because you don't want it to actually break whenever you first start off. And usually by unchecking that, let's go ahead and hit save all. Make sure that it, it's nothing to do with 
what I did. So that's working. That's working. There we go. So, we definitely like to change the weight of it. And you can actually go into the actual um, settings. And if you look, there's some settings you can actually, you got chunk parameters as well, but there's nothing in there. Uh, damage threshold, you can increase that. Impact damage, let's actually change that to a 1 and see what that does. It seems like it made it wider uh, on the dispersion, but still pretty cool. Um, you could actually turn up the damage threshold to say 100. Save and try that. Still fractures with one one gunshot. So still cool. Um, and you can put this on anything. I, I just happened to, to do it on that cube. We go into my starter mesh and go to architecture and and let's grab a wall, 500 by 500. Um, it doesn't matter which way I orient it because I'm just going to modify this one anyway. So then I can actually look at it right there. Instead of actually putting it directly into the map, I can go ahead and right click on it and create destructible mesh. And there it is. And damage threshold, damage spread. I'm going to leave that alone. Enable impact damage. I'll turn that on. Um, Let's try doing some minimal stuff here. Instead of doing a lot of changes, there's damage cap, max chunk speed. There's a lot of different settings you can play with. Um, but I wanted to accumulate damage. We'll put that on. We will cell count. We can change this to 10 if we want to. Let's try that. And then random seed, whatever, let's try 11. Um, but on the flags, um, debris, timeout, that would be where you actually get it to um, the pieces whenever they actually... Well, we'll turn that on for this particular uh, situation here. So let's actually see what we have. So if we hit fracture mesh, and start spreading it apart you can see the pieces that are going to come off from that so if you were to change it to this was 25 cell count let's change that to 25 see what happens hit save let's actually go in here and drop one and take our new destructible mesh and drop it into the map and let's hit play. And there we go. So shooting it doesn't do anything with it. And we didn't change to anything else on it. It did break. You can see where it's starting to shift there. But it's just... Eh. So let's actually go ahead and select it. And go over here. And we want to look at our options. Simulate physics. That's good. We want to make sure that we uncheck start awake. Let's see with that. It blew all the hell back. So you start playing around with the settings and you can actually get it to be more realistic to where whenever you actually walk into it, it may not do any damage at all. So right now, whenever I walk into it, I can just knock it right over. Um, probably do the same thing with this. Yeah, I run into it and it, it knocks it over. You can change the amount of damage that it takes before it actually does anything. So with our other settings, we wanted to go ahead and... We got impact damage. Um, let's actually change the damage threshold to a thousand see what the hell that does. Well, it still blows all the hell in back. I like that one, but it's just way too much for it. So, um... Damage spread. Why not? Let's change that one to one. 
Impact damage? Let's change that to a thousand. And see what happens. So just keep playing around with the different values until you set it and get it set the way you want. You don't want the debris flying that far back if you're just shooting it with a regular firearm. But let's say if you set it up to where it only reacts to explosions and then it, it, it does that. Um, that would be something to look into. Uh, let's see here. Debris in minutes one. Um, debris chunks. You can actually set it to where they will dissolve over time or they will just vanish over time. So we've got debris timeout and we've already got the settings up here for it. Um, accumulate damage, that's fine. Minimum fracture depth. Um, how's everybody doing this evening? Try both of these at 10. Now, I haven't messed with this, but import FBX chunks. You could, I guess, um, import your own giblets, so to speak, if you um, wanted to break into confetti or whatever else. Still looks the same to me. Doesn't look like anything changed whatsoever. But it is cool to um, be able to just blow crap up, you know? And what if you wanted to do larger pieces? Like, this is actually just a cube. So if we actually took this right here, we could modify the size of this. Make it longer. What the heck? Let's make it a little bit skinnier. Let's make it some height to it. And let's make sure we go ahead and raise it up. So the bigger you make it, the bigger the chunks are going to be. And these chunks, actually, if you watch whenever I run into the wall, the pieces will actually fall on top of me, and they will they will bounce off of me. I are beefalo Bart, man. I am their one and only. Yeah, I actually did, uh, well, sorry, you guys didn't see that yet, because um, that video is not out yet. Um, but essentially, I gave a full description of who I am, and what I am, and why I am, and all that jibber-jabber on um, the Udemy course that I'm putting together. But, yeah, I just go by B for Beefalo Bart. Um, I've been known by that name for about ten years or so. And more people actually know me by B for Beefalo Bart than my actual real name. I don't deal with a lot of people in the, the outside real world other than the online realm. But first name is Steven, I will say that much. Yeah, that's just... Um, yeah, I, I don't... Most of the time I won't even respond to my own real name because I don't hear it enough and I don't see it enough. I was say, if you know, just call me Beef. <laughs> or you can call me Bart if you don't, you think uh, Beef is just too ridiculous. Um, actually, Beefalo Bart, um, um, well, about 10 years ago or so, maybe a little bit longer, um, I used to manage and be lead admin for a few um, World of Warcraft private servers. And, um, I got tired of the usual names that I was using on there. And I was like, you guys, you know what? And I had a, a really big community back then. But that was uh, before I did anything really with YouTube. Um, I uh, was like, you guys help me pick a name. Because you know, at the time also, I wanted to shoot um, Cowboy Action Shooting, which is a single action shooter society. It's where grown-ass men and women um, get together. And they dress up like cowboys and they go out and shoot real firearms um 
You carry two six guns, you know, a lever action rifle, and uh, a shotgun. And you go out there dressed as cowboys and you shoot it you know steel plates but each of the the shooting um session or, or the the scenarios are set up to look like cowboy type environments and um i was like well i really want to do this so i got into it and i was like you guys got to help me pick a name so i let everybody in the group help pick a name and they're like, well at the time, I was really on a kick about beefalo, which is actually a real creature. It used to be that beefalo was when you wanted a beefalo burger you get out west in the U.S., you could get a beefalo burger, which was somebody took buffalo meat and hamburger meat, mixed two together, and said, okay, there's your beefalo. Well, somebody got really smart, and they spliced DNA, so to speak, and they crossbred a buffalo and a cow, and came up with a genetic hybrid animal called a beefalo. So there's actually a creature called a beefalo. So that was on a big kick about that. So everybody's like, well, hell, you got to have beefalo in your name. I'm like, well, yeah, I guess. Um, so. Oh, that looks good. That was the thing is I went by beefalo and then. Like, okay, well, you, you know, the, the name that got chosen was Beefalo Bart. Well, I appreciate it. I thought it was goofy, and I hated hearing it. And then when you start shooting in the, that, the, the cowboy matches, they don't call you by your real name. And the first couple of times someone said, hey, Bart. I'm like, who the hell are they talking to? Oh, crap, that's me. Hi, yes, I, I got Beefalo Bart. <laughs> I even have my little shiny tin badge and everything. You, know, you get a tin badge with your um, your number on it. So, I mean, I felt all kind of special and stuff. It was a lot of fun. It sounds kind of dorky, but it's really fun. And it's really good competitive shooting, too. You know, it's like you expect a bunch of growing-ass men and women dressing like cowboys. You think everybody's talking like this and a bunch of hillbilly rednecks trying to be like cowboys. Hell no, we had doctors, lawyers, you know, um, people that made 15 times what I make a year. So, yeah, and it was it was a big time thing. And you got, what the hell? That's not destructible. That's disappear. That's destructible. It blows up. Shoot that one and it just freaking disappears. Um... Goat right ahead. Notice I said goat, goat right ahead. Accumulate damage. Yeah, I want to work with EMS, you know, drove with ambulance service. Um, We'd have to do radio checks every day at 8 o'clock. Tekken. Um, whenever I hear Tekken, I think like um, fighting game, like side scroller based type fighting game, like Street Fighter and that kind of stuff. Enable debris. Why the hell is it just disappearing? So yeah, I, yeah, I think of like games from the 90s. Okay, well that just has physics. It's not destructible. Hey, you son of a don't you hit me again. Hey, you broke my table, you bastard. So why did it not show message log? It said to simulate physics, but collision enabled is incompatible. All right. Uh, 
Um, yeah, with that game type, I, I just, it's a very limited audience um, of people that would actually play it. Um, Honestly, it would be no different than setting up a, um, a side scroller. Like a 3D side scroller would probably be B best. Um, let's save all this junk real quick and I'll just open up a new, new project here. Actually, I can just um, minimize all this stuff. I don't have to. I can just go right back to my content, add new. Um, feature um, so you got side scroller and 2d side scroller so if you actually look at the side scroller type and then um, you go to um, their examples then we need to make sure that uh, you got that set to side scroller game and essentially it's that same basic principle where you have um, limited movement, you're on a fixed screen. And you want to go this way because, you know, you can actually have some 3D characters instead of 2D. So you can have a 3D version of Mortal Kombat or Tekken where you create your characters as a um, physical 3D character. And with the side scroller, you only have left and right movement and you have jumping movement. So anything else from there you just add regular animations so if you add a punching animation to it then they're gonna punch and they're only gonna punch in this direction or in this direction or or kick or launch a fireball you know you can set it to where the axis is either way well okay I'm gonna fire this way or this way it would seem like it'd be easier to set up so um, let's save this let me take a peek really quickly I've got to reorder my, not reorder, but re set up my extra animations. Because I don't have everything that I need right now. Um, so I just go into, let's see, new folder, animations. And just grab them and throw them in here. I don't have any melee animations right now. But. You know what? I'll just grab an animation. Just something. I'll quickly retarget it and throw it into this project right here. Um. Just trying to think of one that would actually be good. All right, well, this is good enough. Um, I don't have like a any. I will look for some melee animations. I'm sure that I've got some. I just gotta make sure that I've got them properly configured, and then I'll put them into the other folder with the rest of my pre-made an animations that I have for the UE4 mannequin because I can quickly um, retarget them to work with um, the Cindy Studios assets and things like that. What am I in? I'm in the Destructo. And of course, since I just created this one, it doesn't show up. I'm sorry, you can't see what I'm doing here because I'm... Um, working off screen in my file browser just digging around here so content I just need to find the asset again I'm just gonna do a spell casting animation it'll be good enough to kinda show the the general gist of how you can set it up in side scroller template uh, let's see There's my content folder, and I'm going to do a two-handed cast spell. 
Well, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to grab all of these and copy them all in here. We'll look at them in here in, in the game instead of actually or in the, the editor instead of just me looking through a file browser. So something like um, one-handed magic attack. Ideally, you'd want to set up animation montages. Mm. Well, to be honest, the main project that I'm actually working on is, um, and I've actually stalled on it because I'm trying to get some other things done around the house and get this room here and this office ready for having a camera. I'm trying to fix some lighting and everything else too, um, but. It's actually a 3D virtual lobby system to where when you first log into the game, um, you got your 3D menu where you walk around. Okay, I want to go single player, multiplayer. I've got a couple different options for that. But the whole point is when you pick the style of, of format you want to play, like I want to go play um, a Western themed game or I want to go play a modern theme. So if you go to the modern themed game, you walk into that area and then you, you spawn in, you're actually into um, a small town, so to speak, where you're actually going to see other players walking around, vendors, you can have an apartment, you can kind of hang out and socialize and stuff, but then you're ready to go play a game of the modern type theme, you go over here and you go to the, the gaming area. It would be the next gen gamer um, arena or whatever. They walk into your building, say if you're one of the developers of the project, uh, they walk into your section and they can go and play the game that you're talking about right there from inside my main project. So I'm actually not making a game myself, I'm actually making the virtual world where you launch off into the games and then come back to, if that makes sense. Alright, so we have our side scroller. I gotta fix the um, the one thing that bugs the living dog shit out of me is event begin play that damn mouse cursor thing it bugs me and it only happens while you're you're in the view on uh, in you know playing in the standalone or in the um what the hell is it called it is called um play and select a viewport so whenever i hit play i have a mouse cursor and I can't move my character. I have to click on the screen and then I can move. And that annoys the living dog crap out of me. So just create for me in the, uh, the your player character, event begin play, set input to game only. And then get a reference to your player controller. And then Set to show mouse cursor. Just connect that, leave it unchecked, and that's it. Now, um, I should have closed it there. Then when I hit play, I can walk around and I don't have to worry about that. So now our only controls are left, right, space bar to jump. Or the. No, that's it. So, yeah, that's our controls. Now, if we want to add um, the number one key to do a certain specific attack. So I'm going to go back into my side scroller character and I'm going to come down here and you can type in keyboard then scroll up to whatever you want in here. Um, I want the number one key. So now whenever I press the number one key I want it to do what exactly? So I'm going to tell it to go to this animation and I wanted to do that animation. No, not that one, because that looks to me like he's he's performing a heal or or an AOE attack. Um, oh, that looks lovely. So we'll take that one. Okay, I've got it selected, so now whenever I go in here and I want to drag off from this and type in play animation. Now, 
technically you'd want to create an animation montage. It would be better to do it that way, but when you're lazy and you don't want to take the time to build an animation montage, because I suck at it because I don't do it enough whenever I should, and then click that, so it's what we already have. I want to look at that animation. I'm going to mouse over it and see that it takes 3.533 seconds. So 3.533. So I'm going to come off from here and delay. Change that number to 3.53333. And then from that delay, I want to go back to the same animation instance I was using before. And then instance, set animation instance class. This is the lazy way to do it. This is not the correct way to do it. It's just a lazy way. It works. It gets the job done. But again, it's not the best way to do it. And side scroller. What the hell is the animation system for this? Um, third person animation BP. Okay. Um, third person animation blueprint easy enough to remember so in theory now as we're walking around back and forth if I hit the number one key and boom it does the attack and then goes back to the normal idle attack so if we wanted to we could actually change the the idle to this one right here where he's got his hand up um, it would be entirely up to the, the individual person but you know the whole point is now I'm doing the animation but I'm still moving around so you'd want to stop the the player from moving while they're doing the animation it looks cool that he's moving around doing it but we want to stop the animation or the, stop the movement so I'll grab a reference to my character movement and let's what is the best way of doing this I don't think that's going to be the best way to do it. Um, of deactivate and reactivate. Um, but we'll try it out and see if it works. So what I want to do is now link this in here and here. And then after this is done, I want to reactivate the movement. This is probably not the right way to do it, but we'll check it out anyway and see what happens. So now we're walking around, I hit one, and I cannot move my character, and now I can. So it works. It waits until it performs the animation and is done. But what if we're facing this way and we do the animation? It's still going to face this way. Um, I guess you could take the time to actually say that you could only do it when you're facing this direction or the other direction but it deactivates your, your character movement so you can't move until it actually finishes boom and then you can start running again you can jump and do all that kind of stuff now if you wanted to add in um, like if you're, you're doing a spell attack like this you're gonna wanna add some particle effects and some cool stuff and things like that so adding in the particle effects um, well, let's see I have starter content. Now I, if I just can well, hit escape, dumbass, and then, then you can find your mouse cursor, you jackass. It sucks when you start getting older and you forget shit. So, um, Particles. We have fire and we have explosion. So if I wanted to, I could actually go into my character and let's make sure that I've got my fire selected go back in there and I want to select mesh add component and I want to add in a particle system of that fire now the reason why I added it to the mesh is now I can come over here to the parent socket and what hand is it actually go from yes temporarily we're going to be on fire um, hmm. so 
that's both hands if you ask me. Um, I'm just going to attach it to the left hand. And I'm going to scale it down quite a bit. Um, 0 0.2 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and I'm going to go ahead and uncheck real time. And temporarily, I'm going to put it right there. So let's see how it looks. Now, we're not going to leave it on all the time. So you do that. It looks like shit. So, um, it's like she put it back into the hand. Oh god, you suck so much ass. You see, I don't know if you guys saw what it actually did, but it, I tried to move it in one axis only, and it moved it all the way the hell out here. Why would you do that? I'm only moving in one axis, not in three. I've selected one friggin' area. So, we'll actually do this and put it in the hand, left. We want it actually on the hands, kind of coming from the hand. So if we hit um, real time again, compile and save. So now if we hit play, uh, this probably wouldn't be the best particle, but I just wanted to do just a quick now what I would I would personally do is I would have this on both hands at the same time so we got on the left hand got P fire and let's go ahead and add another component let's add the other one in and let's actually target that one to the hand R and what size do we make that one it was point two so let's do the same thing Point two, point two, point two, and I'm going to turn off real time. So, just trying to get it to be on the hands. Compile and save, go back to real time. And now I'm going to turn those off so we don't actually see them until we hit one and it delays for say how long do you think that is one one thousand let's see I'm gonna hit it and one one thousand let's try a delay for one second so when we hit this go to our event graph we're playing the animation now we have to keep in mind this delay right here is for our um, our animation stuff so let's break in into that and do a sequence so that we can actually branch off from that at one you know we're not interrupting this part and then we'll come in here and delay now what I want to do is actually come back to these guys and turn off visible on both P fire and P fire one doesn't really matter the names right now because they're there so I want to grab reference to P fire and P fire one if you're peeing fire you're probably gonna need a shot and you, you need to go see a doctor the old proverb of looking for love in all the wrong places um, you stuck it somewhere where you shouldn't have so if you're peeing fire yeah, we're going to leave that alone because the majority of my audience is too too young to understand what Ping Fire is a reference to. Anyway, so what we want to do now is we want to set visibility and connect that there to on. And let's see if we can connect both of those. Yes, we can. And then we want to come over here and set visibility. And we said we want to make that one second. So I'm going to connect that in there and uncheck it. We're going to need another delay here. So I'm going to grab that and 
I'm I'm gonna make it too long. We're gonna say two seconds. I I don't know what what to put on there just yet. And now I need to grab a reference from PFire one and also drag it to there. So this is not going to be timed correctly, and it may not even work. Shit, I don't even know. Um, so as we're, we're running around here, you can see we're, our hands are not on fire. So we hit one and fire, and then go. Fire, woman, thousands. Yeah, two seconds is not actually bad. And then the fire goes away. So what you'd want to do at that point is do the old school method of creating a... Um, uh, a projectile and you'd have to create a projectile and, and all that lovely stuff and yeah that's I got other videos on, on creating projectiles and stuff but what you would do is now to get that projectile to work you actually hit the number one key and you want to now spawn projectile so whenever his hands are all the way out boom that's when you'd want to spawn your projectile and I would put a um, I'll show you how to set up that projectile launcher if you look in your viewport now here's the thing is there's no visible way to set it up easily here um, if you add a component you want to add in a scene and let's call this projectile spawner so now we have a projectile spawner and that projectile spawner is just an invisible thing that we can place into the scene and right now we want to go ahead and just position it where about where we think it's going to be um, you can compile and save now another way you can actually go about this you click on your mesh now you can't see your projectile spawner right now but you click on your mesh and change use animation blueprint to use animation and asset and then find your third person idle animation or whatever idle animation you're using let's type in idle and we're using third person idle is what we're currently using but that's not what we actually want though right now we want to use the um Two hand magic. What is the. What is it we're actually using here? Two hand magic five. So. Come back over to here. You want to find two hand magic five. Now, if you look at your viewport, he's doing the animation. So if you click on your projectile spawner. You can see that it's not quite right there. I come back a little bit and come up a little bit. So that looks about right. So what you would actually do is now your projectile would actually spawn from right here and it would go in that direction. And that would be like spawn actor from class and then the actor would be the projectile, whatever you called it, like fireball or whatever. Um, and then you would tell it the socket transform or where it's actually coming from or whatever you're going to tell it to come from the projectile spawner is your location get a reference to that and that kind of stuff so before I get all carried away here let's actually put our character back to use animation blueprint and it automatically remembered where we were before so compile save and so now, as we're running around, we set up our number one key to, boom, throw a fireball. His hands light on fire as he's doing the animation, and fire, and boom, and it's gone. So you'd add in your animations, and a suggestion for getting that information, getting the stuff you want to use for that, is... Um, it's in here somewhere. Um, Infinity Blade Effects. If you haven't tried that already, hop on it. It is free, absolutely free. You can download. Hi, autosave. Eat my ass. Well, let's take a look at this. So, um, it's got. Oh God, it. 
it's a huge project. It's going to take you a while to download and get it, but the cool shit that's inside there, wow. Um, <laughs> there's little side mini games that demonstrate things. You got this little UFO that you can actually fly inside this thing, an example. And you know, I think you're like zapping cows with a freaking light beam or something. <coughs> I forget what it was, but it was it was cute. Definitely worth checking out. Um, lots and lots of stuff in there. If you if you go to the learn section on the launcher, go to the learn section. Don't make me wait. I'm old. I don't have much time. Shit. Let's go already. Sorry, very poorly done bender imitation. So yeah, um, getting started with Unreal Engine 4. There's a bunch of little stuff here, but as you scroll down, you've got like um, all these different things that are here. When you see this symbol right here, the cloud, that means that there's a download attached to it. Virtual studio, virtual camera, also worth looking at. Um, that one's just creepy. Um, Composure Framework Sequencer. That's actually um, the, the video, if you haven't seen that, that video that was done, um, demonstrating the sequencer and stuff like that. Really cool. Really well done. Um, yeah, content example is right here. So when you're on that, you can select to download it from here. Open World Demo Collection. It's got some trees and grass and some other stuff in it. Boy and His Kite. If you haven't seen that video, also really well done. Water Plains. Um, features Tour 2014. Not bad either. Uh, yeah, all these things are available to download, and there's stuff in them that you can you know, utilize. It's funny, is like this right here, the stylized rendering. There's a download associated with that. I haven't actually looked into this one. It looks very similar to the Cine Studios Polygon stuff. Well, I also saw where somebody else had taken those same trees and were trying to pass that shit off as their own. Pathetic little hacks. Um, yeah, blueprints, realistic rendering. That's really well looking. Um, but check that area out. And also recommend, if you haven't spent a few minutes in the... Um, okay, it's been more than a few minutes. Hello, Marketplace. Thank you. There's a lot of really good assets in here. Don't get asset pack crazy. Now, the reason why I like the Cindy Studios asset packs is because they're assets. They're characters. They're building pieces. There's set pieces. There's construction pieces. But they don't include any code for multiplayer this or single player that or first person that. They're just the main assets you build with. And that's why I like them. They're not trying to be more than they actually need to be. Um, zombies multiplayer. That looks like it'd be quite interesting to take a look at, um, but it's $45. Desert mining props. There's some good paid props in here, but there's this little tab right there that says free. Click on that bad boy. The action RPG, I did a quick video on that, uh, thinking it was just going to be freaking icons. It was a hell of a lot more than icons. You got all the Paragon stuff, and... If you want to use the Paragon characters, go right ahead. I don't like the skeletons that they used, so they can be problematic to deal with. They're usable as they are, but I don't like the skeletons. Um, the skeletons have to be completely remade from the ground up to be able to use them worth a damn. Um, so that's why I'm not working with them. That's one of the reasons why I'm not working with it. Soul City and Soul Cave, nice, but... You know, if you're looking for scenery for your part, your individual project, that would be good. Um, automotive materials, if that's your thing, like carbon fiber and chromes and stuff like that, that's kind of cool. I've got that. I haven't played with it. It's an automatic rigging tool, animation and rigging tool. I haven't messed with it yet. Um, haven't had the patience. But the Infinity Blade stuff is well worth checking into for a project, something like... Um, you know, Tekken or whatever else. You got the weapons, Infinity Blade weapons. So you can use those. You can use the effects. I would definitely get for what you're doing. And if you need some characters, then the Infinity Blade stuff there. And these are all free. Um, the scenery stuff, the Icelands looks good. The Firelands looks good. Um, I think I saw the Grasslands. I've got it. I just don't remember if I've seen it or not. Um, definitely need to get the animation starter pack. 
you're going to run into a need for that pretty pretty regular. Um, probably killing my stream because I'm actually browsing stuff as I'm trying to uh, to, to live stream. Um, connect for Unreal. Um, this is actually a demonstration for. And I don't think it still works, but using Connect Two, which was like the the Xbox Connect system for um, kind of like a virtual reality kind of thing or augmented reality or whatever the hell. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of free stuff you could actually take a look at. But the ones that I think would be most suited for what you're working on, I would definitely get the um, Infinity Blade effects. Infinity Blade Weapons, Animation Starter Pack. Um, I can't really suggest any free guns that, that are out there. So you're kind of on your own if you want guns, but I'm, I'm assuming you'd rather stick closer to the original Tekken and stuff like that. So bladed weapons, baseball bats, um, uh, melee-based weapons, and magic attacks. These two, the Infinity Blade Weapons and Infinity Blade Effects, are probably going to be your best picks. And then if you need some characters, the Warriors, Adversaries, those will do. But I definitely recommend, you know, if you like the style of them, the City Studio stuff. I like them, so I've got them all, <laughs> you know. And don't regret getting any of them. And they've got like three or four little free things as well. So I, ho I hope this helps get you started in the right direction on on something like a that style game because I mean it's literally you know, you could actually take it and my whole thing is if you're gonna create a freaking game don't make same shit that somebody else has already made make it different why not make a version of Mortal Kombat slash Tekken slash that style of game in a full 3D world like this where you actually have platforms you can actually get away from your your enemy by going up here or jumping over to here or making them you know chase you or or fight in different environments and and add some moving platforms and uh, different particle effects and sounds and backgrounds and so forth make it vertical don't just make it some little small area where you can only move left and right only make that vertical space man Make traps. Make it where if you, you miss your jump trying to get across something, you fall to your frickin' death. As for AI, if you're wanting to do single player, not super hard to do. Um, I did have somebody that was good with AI and haven't seen him in like six months, so um, I, d I don't do a whole lot with AI. My primary thing is micro features, helping people get over their fears of just doing things and getting in and trying things. So, I mean, I'd, I'd never done this before. I mean, I've, I've messed around with the, the side scroller thing before because I um, was actually doing a. Um, as a, a test with a couple of the guys from the team of making a modern version of the like an 1980s something game Pitfall. So we were using the Cindy Studios assets and creating a Pitfall game that was using Cindy Studio assets and you know the the side scroller template. So you're actually running around trying to jump over obstacles and if you fall through holes you end up getting um, skewered and well I'm not saying that you don't have a good idea I mean everybody's got their own good ideas and just because it's not my idea doesn't mean it's good I'm just saying keep it fresh keep it original get that hook in there and just make sure you get all the little nuances at first make it functional get out there figure out your attacks before you even worry about doing little particle effects like fire and the just get the system working to where we, like for this attack here make it whenever you're you you, you cast you, your character stops you make your cast and then you can move along and then you add your your particle effects if you want to and then add your projectile effects and stuff like that maybe set it to where 
you have to be facing this direction or this direction. You can lock that way. Yeah, I'm just... It's just one of the things I, I see a lot is I get a lot of people who say... Um, when I try to explain what my whole idea for a game is or a you know, project is or a side, side project, oh, is it like Fortnite? I want to stick a really large weapon of any type, sword, tank, whatever, and shove it right down their throat. I want to beat them around their head, neck, and face. Is it going to be like Fortnite? And I'm going to say this, and I hope that I don't offend anybody. I know that Fortnite was created by Epic Games, and a lot of people like Fortnite, but I'm going to say this, and please don't, you know, anybody get offended by it. And fuck Fortnite. I'm not saying it's not a decent game. I don't like it, but I'm not saying it's not a decent game. I'm not saying they don't have a good thing going. I'm just... Uh. I used to work in the firearm industry, working at gun shops, and if I had a dollar... Yeah, yeah. So if I had a dollar for every time somebody came in and either said, hey, do you have that crossbow like that guy on uh, The Walking Dead used? I don't watch The Walking Dead. I don't watch TV. The, only, the closest you're going to see me to dealing with anything with television is the fact that I'm using televisions for my monitors. I'm using three 32-inch televisions for my monitors. That's as close as I'm going to get to actually watching TV. But, you know, like, was it Daryl or whatever the hell his name was from The Walking Dead? Is it, is it, is that, which one is the one that Daryl used? I want to get one of those. I, I could have sold him any damn thing. Or, you know, oh, that's like in Call of Duty. Just want to come across that counter and just beat them into the the, the tile. I want to beat them into the floor. Hey, do you have that gun from Call of Duty? Or, and I'm not a, a racist person either. But whenever somebody comes into a gun shop, and again, I'm not trying to be racist here, but when a black guy comes into a gun shop with the smell of marijuana reeking off of his body and also the fact that he hasn't probably showered in three days but smells like a, a pot ashtray um, and asks if I've got a specific weapon or like that short whatever AK that was used in a rap video I don't even know what the hell they're even calling it but you know the comparisons I don't like comparisons it's one of the reasons why I don't like Glock that's one of the many reasons why I don't like Glock firearms. Not just because I'm a 1911 fan, but it's because, oh, it's like a Glock. No, it's nothing like a Glock. <laughs> Looks nothing like it. It operates nothing like it. You know, people use that as a household name, and it just annoys the crap out of me. Um, you know, I... <laughs> A test that I give people who want to work with me and do anything firearms-wise. And I show pictures of, of certain guns. And if you cannot identify those guns, and these are guns that are commonly used in the firearms industry, in movies, and video games, like the Beretta 92, or the M9, as most people will refer to it as. Um, the MP5, the M4 the AK-47, you know, iconic weapons. And if you can't name them right off the bat, then you don't need to be putting them in your game. And that's the thing is, whenever I did the other video a couple days ago, which is part of what I'm going to be doing for a Udemy course, thanks to somebody who I won't mention, who got the bug in my ear to actually get back to, to working on my Udemy account. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just kind of messing with them. But um, proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Do your homework. Do your background work. Basically get your shit together before you start doing anything. Put it on paper. Put it in. Make a little file on notepad. You know, go into your hard drive. And honestly, if you don't know how to use this icon right here, if you're on Windows 7, I don't know what the hell it looks like on Windows 10. I don't care. Um, but it's somewhere in this region on Windows 10 as well. Um, to bring up your Windows Explorer, your File Explorer. And honestly, if you can't figure out how to 
right click new text document and then you get notepad comes pre-installed on Windows use notepad and write down your ideas put down your concept put it all there and keep it somewhere where it's safe so you actually have your your basic concept of what you're trying to do with uh, with your your project refer back to it look at it make changes if you need to but stick to a general theme you can always refer back to it and then keep on going from there well you know what since we're screwing around with um, destructible assets then you got me on this um, tangent for um, side scroller then what the hell let's add some destructible meshes into our side scroller and honestly I think it would be kinda cool to do a Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, whatever kind of game that's inside of a, you know. See, that's cool. And think about also, you just installed the game, that that original intro video. Think about that. Think about how you're going to hook the player into the story if there is one. And, you know, it just, it's all proper planning. Just build your yourself as you're going so let's actually create a destructible wall here now that I put those ones I was working on I have no clue um, they were in starter content architecture is a wall so I don't even know if that's gonna work right there or not this big, huge-ass wall crashed through the wall. There we go. Now, what is some stupid tricks you can use that, um, that destructible mesh for? Screwing with your players, screwing with your friends, whatever else. Um, let's rotate it flat. Let's pick it up. Let's drag it over here. It right there, and let's scale it down. Let's bring it up just a hair. So screw with your players, you know. Okay, we come over here. You work your ass off to get over here. I'll just walk across this bridge. Oh shit! And it disappeared. <laughs> Little dumb tricks. We could use it as a destructible bridge. What the hell? Yeah, you better fall down. But yeah, there's stuff you can do with destructible meshes. I mean, shrink it down a little bit and set up a section of, of walkway that they try to walk across it, then it's just an obvious trap and they, they fall to their freaking death in lava or, or a pit full of piranhas or angry zombies or whatever go right, goat right ahead if you got questions just shoot them out there because you know I'm old and I get carried away and stuff <laughs> any static mesh can be turned into a destructible um, I was just playing with these right here because um, that's what was here let's look at props how about this chair um, what if I can I wonder if I can turn this chair into a destructible mesh um, right click create destructible mesh and there it is in here um, damage spread whatever no impact damage impact damage one I'm just making shit up as I'm going along in here um, fracture mesh so let's try doing a save see if that was enough to do it it created the mesh so let's actually put it in here and and see what happens if I run into it so yes in essence you can you can take any static mesh and turn it into a destructible mesh I mean, hell just that quickly I just turn that chair into a destructible mesh now you'd want to set uh, the debris as a, um, a timer to make it actually go away 
So you actually get rid of that stuff off your map if you want to. Or you can leave it on there. It doesn't matter to me. It's your game. I would recommend having it despawn after a certain period of time. And that's all done inside of the destructible mesh. Um, scroll down to debris timer or timeout. Um, and yeah, just change all your different settings to kind of screw around with things to get it to where you want. But essentially, yeah, I mean, you can you can turn any static mesh into a destructible mesh. So I mean, I mean, just that quickly, I turned a chair into it. Yeah. Next, you just got to spit the questions out. I can actually um, see them and respond to them pretty quickly. So, yeah, the, the way I learned about destructible meshes, besides somebody was asking me about it uh, the other day, um, was looking at uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, whenever I still had installed the Conan Exiles um, mod development toolkit. It's 150 gigabytes for the mod kit, the dev kit. Just the dev kit, not including the 67 gigabytes for the game install. I needed hard drive space. I only have a gig and a half or a terabyte and a half of hard drive space. And I had to get rid of something and well that was the first thing I had to go was 150 gigabytes. So um, I've been too lazy to rip my computer back apart and put that other terabyte hard drive in. Yeah, 150 gigabyte just for the dev kit. Not including, I think it's 67 gigabytes for the, the game install. So, yeah, that's a lot of hard drive space to be taken up for one game and its mod kit. Ah, uh, coffee. Gotta love it. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it was cool, but one of the things that I saw in there was... I saw this... You get used to seeing static meshes with that light blue underneath it, and skeletal meshes with what red underneath it. And then you see this right here, and it's like, what the hell is this mesh thing with a pinkish looking color to it? And then I moused over it and it said, destructible mesh. I'm like, what the hell is a destructible mesh? And if you guys missed the first part of this video, because I'm kind of getting carried away here, is you actually have to go to edit, go to plugins. And you need to type in Apex Destruction. Just type in Apex. This is already pre-installed with the game, with the, the, the Unreal Engine, but you have to enable that plugin, and then it'll say it'll ask you to restart. So enable it, and then restart it, and then whenever it comes back up, all you have to do is find. And I was like, well, damn it! I'm clicking on this thing, and I don't see anywhere where it says to to convert it over. You actually have to come in here, like say, the couch. Uh, right click on it in your your browser down here, and then you'll see create destructible mesh. And then when you do it, you can see that you actually can create a destructible mesh out of pretty much any static mesh, and you don't interfere with your original static mesh. And I ha I don't fully comprehend all of the settings just yet, but. You know, I would, this was just something that um, was to help somebody else get them started with doing the um, the destructible meshes. They were asking me. I'm like, well, hell, I don't know. And, the, and whenever I don't know something, it's going to piss me off, and I will learn it. You make it like you wall run, but it doesn't break. Um, yeah, you can actually adjust the damage threshold. Um and I hate to promote other people's, um, uh, well, I, I, I promote other people that, that are helpful, but um, the Dean Ashford, I think it is, um, YouTube channel, has a really good video on it. Um, there's some other videos that are out there, but Dean's got a good one. Um, I don't know. The, to add explosions to it? Knowing me, I would I would definitely have to do that. Um, but there's other ways to. There's, there's more than one way to skin a cat. 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there is a way of doing that so that whenever you actually... you got fracture effects right here, and you've got particle system and sound. So, hell yeah. Um, if I had a particle system in of... Screw it. Let's add sparks. And sound, let's add collapse Q. So, we'll try that out. Uh, like I said, I, I have not done it before. So, I don't know. Let's make it work. So we see it comes apart. Let's save it. Um, I'm pretty sure you can add skinning a cat to it. Um, because, you know, that to me is um, a particle effect. And it definitely has a sound. Wait, you're actually supposed to kill the cat before you skin it? Where's the fun in that? Um... <laughs> So yeah, you could add the, the particle systems to it. Um, you could add more than one set. So it looks like I got zero and one here. So I could add a particle system and sound. And if I wanted to add um, an extra blood splatter or whatever else, you know, you could add the particle system and sound. <laughs> hey, gotta have a little fun, right? So let's actually see what happens now. Let's actually move you over here. We're done with you, chair. Get out of my way. So let's try the couch. Let's throw the couch in here. And... Yeah, screw it. We'll leave it right here for now. Okay, well, it's just a permanent spark, so... Um, I would say you probably want to make your own particle effect system for it. Because that spark one is just a, a shower emitter. So let's actually try... Um, Instead of sparks, let's try the, um... Yeah, screw it. We'll just try explosion. So now, can you guys hear it whenever I run into it? It's not the best sound and not the best particle effects for it, but you know what? It gets the job done for getting the, the point across, at least. So now, knowing that, we can actually go back into our chair. Just clicked on it here. We can now go over here, and I'm pretty sure it's not going to be in this. So you click on it, you find it, you hit your magnifying glass, and no, I don't want the frickin' material, dumbass. Right here, you click on that, and then go into the actual mesh itself, the destructible mesh, scroll down, go to fracture effects, and then you got zero here, click on that, and particle system, let's add in the explosion, and let's add in explosion cue. Hit save and play. So now what happens is we hit this. It works. Hit that one, it works. So you get the explosion cue, and then it only works whenever it destructs. Yeah, I mean... You would want to choose your, your particle effects a lot better and, and effects for this, but... But for just something that's slapped together with starter content and just basic stuff. So, I mean, you could set the damage threshold to where if I come over here and jump on the couch, it's not going to fall apart. But if I come over here and I launch a fireball at it, then pow, it's just going to go up in a puff of flames or whatever else, and you can set that, that effect up. So, it is kind of cool that you can do that. So, you'd, you'd want to set up your your fireball to actually trigger that or whatever, you know, for your damage. So, you can actually add that into to any... So, you, you can convert any static mesh. So, if you don't want a particle effect, then, you know, like I did this one right here, and let's click on it. Click on the magnifying glass, and there it is. Let's close the other one we had open so we don't confuse ourselves. Double click on it. Again, just scroll down to effects, fracture effects, one. What if I just want a particle system only, or if I just want a sound only? I could put in the. Yeah, the best one to, to work with on this one would just be the, the collapse cue. 
why do I use sound cues instead of just the sound files? Because with a sound cue, you can set up particle, uh, the particle. You can set up uh, sound attenuation. So I'm going to add dust into this one. So when I walk over this wall section here up top, that's actually my my trap. Then can't really see it, but it was going to spawn some dust. Let's see if it's actually up there. Okay, so you can't see it. Oh no, my fat ass killed a chair. And a couch. You can change the amount of, of particles that actually the item breaks into. So, again, if you want to find it, just click on it in the map. Click on the magnifying glass next to here, and then you can double click on it. So, play around with all the different pieces parts of this and you can see the debris lifetime one minute max is well let's change that to one and 0 0.5 no hell that would be 30 seconds um, we'll do 0 0.1 with a max of 0 0.7 screw it um, max debris separation per minute. Um, again, I'm going to do 0.1 and 0.7. So I want to change the amount of time that the debris and stuff will actually stay there. Chunks are the big pieces, debris are the little pieces. Um, Accumulate damage. Um, really wouldn't worry about accurate ray casts for the most part. If you're doing a shooter and you want to be able to shoot through the pieces that are laying there, very few times is that going to be an actual thing. Crumbles, smallest chunks, no. Debris max separations. I'm not going to mess with that one for right now. Support minimum fracture depth. Enable debris. I'm going to turn that on. Debris depth. I'm not really sure on that one. That's another one that I need to experiment with. Um, yeah, so just take some time, experiment with it, play around with these different settings, and see what you can come up with. So I want to try to increase the number of, of pieces parts of the couch. So cell count, fracture, miscellaneous description. Yeah, let's let's try. I haven't seen where that makes an actual difference here. Random seed for reproductibility. Um Yes, Dean had a really good video on this. So if you really want to know the little, the little tiny ins and outs, you can wait for me to make the remake video on this, or you can watch his video. Of course, I always like you watch my videos. <coughs> Excuse me. But, you know, I'm just weird like that. Um, I like doing the live streams, because even if I have a low viewer count, you ask questions, I'm going to freaking answer them. And if I don't know, I'm going to we refer you to places where you can get the information. Most people charge for this. Um, impact damage controls how much damage is applied upon collision. So this, you could actually change this to um, let's try five. What the heck. You could actually probably go even higher down. Probably say like 5,000 or something like that. Just play around with the settings, get them to where they, they work to fit what your needs are. Flags, open back up. I said flags with an L in there, I didn't say the other word. Um, yeah, there is um, a setting in here that actually controls the amount of damage an item can take, and also the amount of pieces that it'll break into. Alright, so, 
yeah, I, I can't stand that being that quiet. I gotta have sound for every damn thing, so I'm just weird like that. Cause I did not put a sound file in with that one. I just put that. I got the collapse cue. Wait. I got a collapse cue on there, and screw it, we're also going to put the, I don't care, I'm just going to put smoke on there. Why did it not, or maybe I'm just not paying attention to it, but I didn't hear, I don't hear the sound. Whenever that breaks, I didn't hear the sound. I would say that I, I know that I'm not going crazy, but that would not be true. I don't want to lie, I don't want to lie on my videos. Because I'm pretty sure that I am going crazy. It's just a matter of time, but... Um, well, it it fell on top of the chair. We heard the sound whenever it crushed the damn chair. But it damn sure didn't make any noise whatsoever whenever I, I stepped on that piece up here. In the old games had dialogue and pics that showed up the characters and showed text from the characters talking. Um, you're referring to like having like the, the bubbles above their head and it shows the text there. Some of the really earlier games, it was actually displayed on the very, very bottom of the screen. Um, whereas as, as we're looking at the, the gaming window here, like right along in here, the bottom section of the screen would always be black or red or blue or whatever else, and you would have the text here in, the, in that that section. So the really early games, when the characters were talking, you saw text right here because you didn't have any way of doing sound, for the most part, other than the 8-bit um, beeps and, and squawks. So that's where you would put the text. But then, you know, as games evolved and you actually got more than 32 colors and stuff, um, you could actually put bubbles above their head. And there is a way of doing it um, where it actually draws a bubble. You, you can actually dr put a widget and create a widget and attach it to the actual player. Like say with um, with our character here, it's not going to be exactly the same because you want to put like an image there and then you would attach that widget. So let's actually look at creating a widget in here. Go to new folder and widget. We'll go in here and we'll just make a quick widget for user interface, widget blueprint, and text underscore sample. And so I'm typing here on um, Discord. Can you make a listen server and have friends join you on, on different networks? Yeah. Other than my simple Steam multiplayer system that works off of Steam. Um, unfortunately, Unreal Engine 4 is kind of weird when it comes to networking stuff. Sorry, um, I don't usually type while I'm also streaming. So let's go into our text sample, and all we're going to do in here is put in um, text and let's put in here. We'll just you're going to have pre-made items. For right now, I'm just going to put in hello. This is a stupid and simple text thing. Now see, it's all put in here in one line, and um, I'm sure that there's a way of doing it in here, of actually coming in and just hitting, you know, to whatever, but what I always end up doing if I want to be multiple lines, instead of actually typing it all out, you can't just shrink it down like this. Now, you could actually do this um, it's supposed to auto word wrap, but what I found the easiest way to do it is think about how you want it to be positioned in here and actually create something as a text file, like we're doing here. Just right click, make a new um, text document, 
doesn't matter what you call it, saying, hello, I am a stupid and simple person. So you, you set it up this way. You don't have to worry about the, um, the justifications on it. I'm going to do that. I'm not going to save this, so don't save. But just create just a, a basic thing like that, and then come in here and control V, and you can see it kept all the same way that it was inside there. And if I do center justification, now it keeps it that way. So it's center justification. Now you can kind of play around with this. If you're trying to figure out how to get it to be perfectly centered, it's not going to matter as much right now. But if it really matters, you can do a size of like 250 by 200, just as a rough estimate right there. And then that way, whenever you do your anchor to center, then you can do the X, which was 250. Do half of that would be negative 125. And then half of 200 will be negative 100. And it puts it centered. So now I'm going to hit compile and save. Now I've got that widget in here. Now I don't really want it to be like that. I need it to be like that because I'm OCD. So compile and save. We've saved this widget here. So how you decide to um, um, make that pop up as your dialogue of as we're playing you could have a dialogue come up holy shit you just broke that couch you know that's when you would actually trigger events to happen um, you would create your triggers and okay, I'm going to click on you and I want to edit side scroller character there we go. So this is all of our cool stuff for our, our animation for doing our attack. We're not going to mess with that. Our event begin play. Um, let's create a, for right now, to keep it simple, you know, the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid. We're just going to do a key binding. So I just want to do a keyboard and pick a key. Let's use Q. That sounds good. Sounds good. So now whenever I press the Q key, it's he's going to say something. So when I press it, then I want to also look at my viewport really quickly and let's um, add a component now here's the thing is widgets as far as I remember were experimental um, yeah user interface widget and we're just going to leave it called widget. Then with it selected, you come over to, I'm not going to socket it to any one particular thing. I'm just going to move it up to above the head. So it will be the thought bubble. It will be the bubble above his head. And now whenever I want to select the actual widget, it's space, timing policy, widget class, test sample, instead of text sample. So yeah. All right, so you see the widget is now there floating above his head. We're going to be looking at our character from the side, so we want it to... And there is actually a setting to always have it facing a certain direction. I don't remember what that is, so I apologize for that. Uh, but now, since we're, we're looking at it from the side, we want it to kind of pop up right there. Um but we don't want it always visible we want to trigger it so we need to find visible and uncheck it so we hit compile and save and now again like we were doing before is we're going to go ahead and get a reference to our widget here and then sorry these little tiny black lines right here my freaking starting node has to be locked into one of those freaking corners I am so so many freaking OCDs, it's stupid. So we just want to do set visibility, and there you go. We're going to turn that on to there. And so now when we hit the Q key, it's going to turn the visibility on, and then let's give it a delay. Whoop, turn that right there. Give it a delay of three seconds. 
just long enough to read what it says and then let's control C control V connect that in uncheck the visibility reconnect widget to the target so now when we press Q it pops up three seconds later it goes away very crude way of making this work again as we're running around boop, hello I'm a stupid and simple person you can see whenever I turn though no nope, that's our casting I turn this way and it goes away so how could you actually use that you set up an event like okay I'm running this way and I'm going the right way but what if I want to go instead of it saying hello I'm a stupid simple person um, you can see that it goes away if you turn to go this way you can say hey stupid you're going the wrong way now when it turn back this way the widget disappears so now if I go back this way then yeah so you can tell the person that they're going the wrong way by changing the orientation of it so if I went back in here and went to my viewport and for right now I'm going to turn the visibility back on um, do, 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 do. it was in here somewhere damn it um, visible right here and rotated the other way it's 180 degrees compile and save and we're going to pretend that that text actually says hello stupid you're going the wrong way um, so now if I go this way hello I'm stupid and going the wrong way now I go that way hey hello stupid you're going the wrong way so I left it visible right there but you can set it to trigger however you want so if I turn it off visible again hit compile and save and then go into play it's not going to be here so now if you go over to a certain point you could actually set up a box collision and whenever you hit that box collision it's going to then send a signal back to the player hey stupid you're going the wrong way and then if you turn this way okay it's fine so you start walking back you know I want to go this way anyway and it'll say hey stupid you're going the wrong way and it's just going to give them a warning there's so many different things that you can do to trigger that so that's that's the the simple way of doing it. The other way of doing it is that same simple little freaking dorky um, thing that I spelled incorrectly. You could actually come in here and grab an image, and let's take the image and change the color and opacity to oh screw it. Let's do a blue color, a dark blue, and let's change the opacity to 0 0.3 make it semi-transparent and then let's go ahead and anchor this to the center as well and then let's drag this over here so it covers up our text and then you hit compile and save then now whenever we trigger it um, it's not there because I'm stupid you guys are letting me do dumb things here um, no it should be there um, because that's part of this widget right here so let's save so I should go back into our character um, the viewport oh, we got to turn visibility back on so I can see what I'm looking at so I'm like oh where the hell is it I know it's in here so y'all let me go crazy and stuff here I know I can't stop doing dumb things. Y'all won't let me stop doing dumb things. I have to blame somebody else. It's, it's, it's called turning senile and shit. Click on the damn widget, you idiot. See, I'm doing even more stuff. This dumb. Visible. Right there. So, why did it not show that whenever it's actually in here? let's make sure that we do a negative one on my Z order so that it should put the text behind there and the text should be a zero a Z order of zero um, this is like 
there. I mean, it's there in that widget. So therefore, it should be here displaying it there. But essentially, that's what you would do, is you would put that, um, your background, you could put an image in there that has a nice, pretty little background and has a bubble shape or whatever else. And then whenever you actually go in here, hello, I'm stupid and a simple person. It is not showing that blue frame. Oh, it is. I'm sorry. Um, it's there. I promise. Um, let's go to the image and let's turn up the opacity a little bit. Because it just wasn't visible enough. It was there. And just my old ass couldn't see it. Ah, see? I only thought I was making a mistake, but I was wrong. Hello, stupid, you're going the wrong way. Okay, now you're going the right way. How about now? Nope, nope, still going the wrong way. I'm going over here? Nope, still going the wrong way. Oh, shit, I broke a chair. Um, oh, shit, I broke the couch. Hey, stupid, you're going the wrong way. But I still don't know why that one is not making any noise. So let's actually go ahead and turn off visible. So yeah, that's that. And so you could actually create a series of different ones here, or you could actually get creative. This is the slow, easy way to do things. So if you're mentally challenged like I am, and like, see, not visible. Q key, there it is. Stay up there for three seconds, and it'll go away. And then you come over here, and then... So yeah. There's a whole different area of things I haven't covered a whole lot of just yet um, that really, so I'm going to click on my character here, I'm going to edit him, and you've got all this stuff right here, I've put these two that are fire, and that was the particle effects that we turned on and off for for his hands to, to burst into flames and then throw the um, the fireball in chat, it's good to see you again there bud. Um, but there's in your components add component you can add new blueprint script component this is where things get a little interesting I haven't built anything to put in here yet so I'm just gonna hit cancel but you can actually come in here and I'm just gonna use this this folder right now for for giggles because I'm gonna delete this project when I get done with this video anyway um, you can create different things like um, Yeah, my brain is just shutting down. Been going for almost two hours. And it's hour and 48 minutes so far. So, yeah. Oh, and by the way, um, when I was doing the... Until I can remember what the hell I was doing there. Um, the video stuff. You can actually go in here and I'm going to grab a plain... Yeah, it's hell when you get old. But at least I got some cool shit that I know how to do, so. Grab this plane. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. It didn't have to be 90, but I'm just going to grab this. And first off, I don't need you. Go away. Um, oh, you changed your name on freaking Discord. I see how you are. I'm like a... I was like I know, I I didn't know when you changed your name on on Discord. It's just that uh, I knew the name that you're talking on on YouTube's on the YouTube's right now. So I'm gonna end up changing this because you notice this is not right. It'll fix itself slightly whenever I do this. Um, and the video that I was gonna use in this demonstration, I can't use because you know I don't want this video to get that. Oh, you violated or you're using copyrighted material, so, you know, you're going to die in a fiery auto crash. We're going to take all your money. You know, the usual YouTube shit. Um, they come up with new ways of screwing their, their, um, their channel host. Video. Adding a video to your... See, they changed the way things work in each version for some reason and they they screwed up how this used to work and it was a lot easier to work with um, to add a video and have the audio work 
So, all right, you guys may think this is going to be a boring one, but I'm going to bring in my Uzi video. But I'm going to do it slightly different, okay? This is just some videos that I've got right here. I'm going to go to my project folder, and we're in Destructo. I'm going to throw it in... Oh, I don't care. I'm going to throw it in the animations folder. I'll throw my Uzi video of me shooting an Uzi into animations. We're just going to copy here. So now I've got the video there. So it's it's physically in the project now. Even though if I come over here to the animations folder, it, it's not going to show it. I did put it in the right one. Damn one. Destructo animations. Yeah, it's not going to show it in here. Um, the camera should be here tomorrow. Um, I'm, with the order that I placed, I went ahead and added for a two-day shipping. So it, it says it will be delivered tomorrow. So I'll have the camera here tomorrow. And as I mentioned before, I will have a channel set up in Discord as well. I've already got it set up right now to where um, Discord voice comes in over my right monitor. And if I have somebody talking in Discord then their voice is going to come out the right monitor and picked up into this version of OBS so I can have guests talking on the, the YouTube video. Alright, so I added the video to here. It's not here. But, no problem. I'm going to come back over here to my widgets folder just because i got nothing else better to put it in. I'm not going to sit here and keep making new folders like I always do for everything else. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create media and I'm going to do a file media source and I'm going to call this Uzi FMS yeah I got a, um, a Bluetooth headset and with a, um, a new Bluetooth dongle because you know I lost my old one I didn't like it to begin with um, <laughs> so um, with that Bluetooth dongle and the new headset, I will be able to, if I need to, to get up and go take a smoke break, just get away from the machine for a minute and, and calm my nerves. And you guys can tell whenever I, I start getting, um, by the way, inside the, uh, the file media source. Yeah, that's the one that I was going to use. Um, the music video for, I'm oh, sorry, you can't see it. Uh, the music video for Disturbed, Sound of Silence. But I'm pretty sure I'd get a copyright violation for that. Freaking kick-ass song. So yeah, I'll be able to... Whenever you hear me getting, like, hyper-sounding, talking really, really fast, um, means that I'm my nicotine levels are diminishing and that I need to recharge my nicotine. <laughs> it sounds terrible, but, um, but when you've been smoking for over 35 years, your body is chemically dependent upon that crap. If you ha don't smoke, never start never pick one up if you do start quit now while you can like I said I've been smoking for 35 plus years and hell I may kick over and die tomorrow from a freaking heart attack because I'm that stupid that I haven't you know quit so here is the file and I'm going to select open so now it's it's in the file media source so I'm going to hit save all now, my file media source, I'm going to go ahead and, let's see, well, right now I'm wearing a patch, and I have my e-sig right here as well, so you guys will see me trying to use the the e-sig while I'm streaming, is to help with that, plus I'm wearing a patch, I could wear two of the strongest level patches and be hitting the e-sig, and still need to get up and go have a smoke, it's that bad. So I'm going to go back to media, create a media player, select video output media texture asset, and OK. And I'm going to call this um, BBG media player. Just something stupid so I know what it is. So now I'm going to hit 
Um, save all again, even though I don't need to save it just yet. I'm going to open up my media player, and here is the video. You can actually double click on it and play it. As you get loud, let me turn my volume down. So, this is the video. My fat behind. Shooting a Uzi. Put a couple mags through it. So, got all this on here. I'm not going to turn on loop. I don't really care if it loops for this example. But you can actually um, select loop and it will continuously play it. So, that's good enough. Everything's good to go. I'm going to hit save. And you can see now I've got a thumbnail of that video in there. I'm going to right click on it and create material. And there we go. BBG Media Player Video Material. Now, it's got the material. So if I look at it now and click on it, it should at some point, it's showing up here in the texture, but it's not showing up in the preview. So it's going to go ahead and hit save. I'm going to take this this material and I'm just going to throw it up here onto this media plane. Now, there's a couple ways of actually doing this. Um, the easy way for now is since we're doing it in this particular map and it's going to be part of the map in the background, if I hit play now, it's just a black screen. I got nothing. So what I need to do now is I need to hit blueprints open the level blueprint. Now I've done this in actual um, with like the the Cindy Studio assets the television screens that are in the town pack. I put actual working video inside there worth working attenuation. However I still haven't figured out how to do YouTube videos where yes you can actually stream YouTube videos into the scene and I have not figured out how to set the sound attenuation of those just yet. But let's go ahead and let's um, event begin play. Then from there, we need to create a variable media player. And then we need to come over here to the variable type. We need to make this a media player and select that there. So that's good to go. And I need to compile and save. Now it pops up for default value for, for the media player. I can now select my media player and compile and save again. I compile and save more than I need to, but it's always better to over save than never save. Promise you. So now we've got that in here, we need to go ahead and drag a reference for our media player into the scene. Get media player. And then we need to open source you can also open URL and have a link directly to a YouTube video but there's other things you need to do to be able to get the link to work just right so that it, it plays it in a full screen and I'll, I'll, I'll do another video later on that if anybody wants to see that so our media file source goes in there and compile and save now the problem we're going to run into is we are not going to have any sound. And you can see the video is facing the wrong direction. So I need to take my screen and rotate it 90 degrees and let's go ahead and resize it. So it looks a little bit more appropriate. I'm going to make it even bigger. Um, so let's make this big huge wall and I'm going to place it next to the wall so it just isn't a floating into the outer space there or in, or in the middle of space you know we can't get to that anyway but if we hit play the video is gonna play just fine in the background and you can make it as big as you freaking want to but the video is not gonna play sound until you do one more thing so you see it's it's nothing there's no sound so um, to add a component and it is a media sound and select your media player and let's do a quick save all again 
you want to add that media source. And now if you're doing this in a blueprint for like a TV or a movie theater screen or something like that, you can actually put that into the blueprint. So now we have sound. So it's really loud and it's going to be really deafening. So if you want to control the sound of it, then you can actually come down here on the actual item and I've added in the um, the component for and yes I am not being very clean and neat and organized here but if you look got the plane and I don't see anything else for it so when we added that component for that where did that component go is a good question one thing you do need to, to create though is when you're setting it up right there you have to scroll down a little bit and make some changes to the size of everything but there's our media sound and audio component now you can see sound here and all this stuff there's nothing on here um, there's no way of actually changing anything which kinda sucks um, if you click on it here on media sound uh, you should find attenuation function and you can set the attenuation levels right here and with that you can with the attenuation it's going to set how close you have to be to be able to hear it but you also want to make sure enable volume attenuation is set um, so when you're doing this in a blueprint it's a lot easier and then you can go right here to override your attenuation or you can actually use your own custom sound attenuation. You can select create new asset sound attenuation, tell it where you want it to go. I'm just going to put it in the same folder. So now we're going to use that. When I open it up, I can actually change that attenuation right here um, and allow you to, to change the attenuation here. I generally create a normal one that I use kind of a blanket thing like if you walk over a trigger that plays a sound effect of a squeaky bridge or a door opening and closing you want to really get a small attenuation radius so that you're you don't hear it on the other side of the friggin map that somebody just opened a friggin door so that's how you're gonna set that and you can set it up to be linear um, you can actually change it from being a sphere to a capsule which is also good or a box or even a cone with a cone you can have it directed in front of a television so you can't hear it unless you're in front of the TV or something like that um, volume that's where you really kinda wanna have it inside of um, the um, a blueprint instead of into the map like this because you have a little bit more control over the volume level so right now it's just gonna be really loud and I don't see a direct way of actually changing the sound you got your master sound here you could set up a, um, a sound class for it and then control your volume that way but in a blueprint it's a lot easier to control volume levels attenuation levels and things of that nature source effect chain sub mix allow spatialization that kinda helps a little bit too um, depending on the type of attenuation you're using I could go on all day long about for continuation of why it's important and why it's cool and that kind of stuff. But it's just nice that you can actually throw a video into your scene and audio and everything else. They changed the way that it, it works. That was the main reason why I was doing the, the, the other video the other day about this is because it was it used to be so much easier to do this. And of course, you know, if it's easy, then why the hell would they keep that in Unreal Engine 4? why because you e4 so now you actually have that um, but you can have videos playing in the background like I said I would set it up as a actual item you can set it up as a widget you can do all kind of different things with it okay I can hear the sound of the, the, the thing breaking this time over the sound of the freaking machine gun so doing YouTube videos is pretty much the same way um, when you're actually into the um, the source. Um, 
a blueprint, open level blueprint, where I did open source. If you were to, to open up your media player and open, you could select open URL. And I do this in a widget normally and create a URL in a widget where you enter this URL right here. You have to put it in in a certain way if you want YouTube to be able to play the video and only show it in full screen, so to speak, without the play controls and without the other junk in there. Um, I think in the original video that I did for this, I actually linked in a... Um, I put it in the des video description of how you actually put it in there. Um... I'd have to actually look at it. Yeah, of course. You know, like I said, just just ask questions. I'll pick them up as I see them. I'll have to look for it to find out where I put it. But I actually had a text file somewhere around here that um, I wrote down or typed in what I actually used. It is a specific way of doing it, because if you, and I had to, to try like forty or fifty different freaking ways of doing it. I type it all in, get it all working into a text file, copy and paste, and it partially works or whatever. But if you guys get interested in about the YouTube thing of putting a YouTube video streamed into your levels. I said, let me know in Discord and I'll put it in there. No, go ahead, man. I'm, I'm old and I wander mentally anyway, so, you know. you got to catch my brain as I go. So we started off just with the Destructible Mesh thing and then branched off into, you know, the, the, the rest of it. Although my drink cups have runneth empty. Well, I'm waiting for you to type that out. I'm trying to think if there's any other examples of stuff that I wanted to include in just kind of messing around with this video. We've got destructible meshes here. Nope, can't say that I've heard of, of Gang Beast. Did anybody decide they were going to take up that challenge that I posted on Discord? I kind of screwed mine up, and, and it was getting late, and I was getting tired, and I quit screwing with it. But you know, with that um, gang beast, what type of game is it? It's like, is it two uh, D side scroller, side scroller? 3D side scroller, um, first person shooter, third person shooter. Yeah, see, I was getting kind of confused with some of the things that I was talking about earlier because I was referring to stuff from a video that I actually um, made for Udemy. Three D side scroller. Yeah, um, can't say that I've heard of it, but with that same basic principle of of a side scroller, then um, uh, do, 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 you know, you can pretty much do anything with that same format. With that three D side scroller environment, you can create all manner of of cool stuff. Where the hell was all my damn? That's I lose everything. Then starter content, architecture, and props. Is there a certain feature you want to talk about on that? Or like how it was done or how to create it or why women act funny or whatever? I figured out why that one right there is not working correctly. You suck. 
because I'm really just four. And this gun has no balls. I'm telling you, ever load the first person example. I don't understand. I can shoot the hell out of this one. I'm going to set that feature up in it. To grab another and throw them. And that's... That's kind of a fun thing to get into, is... Essentially, you have to look at it in a certain way. When you actually grab a hold of the character, and this is where it it could be interesting, is grabbing a character and picking them up and throwing them. Although not really easy in real life either, but you have to think about it. When you pick up an item, it's that. It's an item, whether it's a person or it's an item. Um once you pick up that other player, we'll say, or that NPC or whatever else, you pick up that other um, character, they should not be able to be able to break loose. They lo no longer have control. You'd want it then to have its own animation system, but then you're going to have to figure that it's no longer a character. So the difficult part is you have to then say, well, if this character is completely unique with a specific set of clothing and weapons and everything else, you've got to make a duplicate of that character as not a physical character. It then becomes a prop. It can still be a skeletal mesh, but it needs to be a prop with no character movements and just have a, a basic asset of a animation. You'd want that animation to be basically as if they were being held by somebody else. They're going to perform that animation of their body going limp or their arms going limp. You can, um, you're can, you going to have to enable physics and gravity to the model, the skeletal mesh, so that it has a certain amount of ragdoll to it. Or you can either make sure that it has its own separate animation. It's not one of these that's a quick fix. You, one of my little throw-togethers of saying, okay, well, this is it. You can do it the half-assed way, or you can do it the correct way, and here's how to do both. But the correct way to that, I would say, if you want that other character to be picked up and thrown, is you need to turn that other player, you need to make a duplicate of that other player without character movement, but just with a specific set of animations or animation montage, so that whenever they're picked up, they no longer have control. They're not even there anymore. Their character disappears and is despawned from the map completely. So now you pick the, that player up and or that other character up. Now that character has been removed from the map and is now you're now holding a duplicate version, duplicate blueprint of that particular one with no animations whatsoever other than a specific animation montage so that it looks like they're being picked up and have a certain level of, of floppiness to them or they could be struggling or whatever else and then as you throw them and they hit the ground and stop moving then you can tie in an animation montage of them getting back up if they're allowed to get back up or if they're just dead then they just lay there dead but so it's not a quick thing to do but it is possible there's a couple different ways you could do that like I said one is to actually um, you're gonna have to essentially assign you can do it the IK method which would be a pain in the ass you can do it as a socket and they become no more than just a damn gun so if you do it with ragdolls then you're just doing another skeletal mesh that is an actor and not actually a character. It's just you create a blueprint and say so go right to whatever folder. I'm just going to go into this one. You create a new character, blueprint, actor, and then when you go in there, you add a component of skeletal mesh, and that skeletal mesh just happens to be the SK mannequin. For, for this, this is the one that I've got loaded. And instead of animation class and use animation blueprint, you can use um, animation asset. 
and pick an animation. So when you actually do that, they actually are not able to move. Um, there is a way of doing it, and I have actually done it before, to where the the player just turns total ragdoll. They lose all of their abilities, and their legs and arms and everything are all floppy. So you would then look at the skeleton for the skeletal mesh, and you'd want to put, like, if you're picking them by the, the neck and by the crotch, you'd, like grabbing them right by the inner thigh on, on this leg here, and grabbing them by the neck, um, you'd want some form of, of socket. Oh, I understand. I mean, but you have to be able to control the character. The character no longer becomes a character. It becomes a, a skeletal mesh, a, a blueprint actor. It's no longer the character. The character no longer has control of their character once they've been picked up and thrown. And then they can go through the, the we'll say, the animation montage for being stunned on the ground and then getting back up on their feet and going back to an idle animation. Hopefully I'm, I'm making sense with that, you know. Because, I mean, like that, it's just he's just a raw character now that does the animation. I mean, he doesn't actually exist. He doesn't have any collision. He doesn't have anything. He's just there. You could turn on collision if you want to. Um, go to the skeletal mesh. Uh, go to collision. Select block all. Compile, save. Give him collision, but then um, you also want to enable physics. And yeah, there's a series of lines you're going to have to put into this for a triggered event. So in the event that they're being held, you see he's there now and actually has um, collisions to him. So yeah, there, there's multiple ways you can do it. I mean, so the easy way to do it, there is no super easy way of doing it you're going to end up having to um, create your character so that um, it becomes a second entity of a blueprint actor instead of an actual character. Or you can actually take that blueprint of the other character, and the third person character or whatever else, and when you start doing multiplayer, if it's multiplayer, you've got to make sure you get your replication right as well because you, you may see on your screen that you've just picked this guy up and threw him across the room, Whereas the other guy is looking like, what are you talking about? I'm just still standing right here. They're not going to see you. So doing multiplayer replication is a pain in the ass. That I avoid it whenever possible. I can do it, but I don't want to. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. So, um, yeah, but you, you have to convert the character over, or you can tell your character inside the blueprint. Um, if we're, we're pretending that this is actually the, the character, there is no... Actually, I can't use that one. I have to use an actual character um, with character movement. So you need to get like a you know, reference to your character movement, like we did on the spell. Whenever you cast that spell, we had to get a reference to our character movement, and we had to deactivate the character movement. And at that point, you could actually also come in here and select on your mesh that um, enable physics, simulate. Um, no, um, not hit events, collision presets. There's um, there is a series of, of things you can add in here that will actually enable the physics of the mesh, the skeletal mesh, to where it turns them into a ragdoll. It's been a while since I kind of screwed with that kind of stuff, but it is possible to do that. But you have to actually attach them. They need to be attached, like I was doing with the um, the fireballs, putting making the characters. Where the hell is my character? Oh, right there. Um, with the the fire. Whenever I attach the fire, I attach it to a socket. In this case, the hand. So you'd actually have to go back in and go to your skeletal mesh and go to my mannequin K 
character mesh. So you go into your skeletal, your skeleton itself, and you're gonna actually have to create a socket for the hand, like main hand or hand R or whatever. Create a new socket, and with that new socket, say um, hand R. I'm gonna right click, add socket, grabber. So now I actually have a socket called grabber that's on the right hand, and then I'd want to come back here and you know, whatever, and get the position where I'd want it to be for the hand. And then this is going to be totally dumb as hell looking. I'm just going to do this just for the fact of showing an example um, of what it would look like. So again, with our first person character, let's go ahead and edit. And just like we did for, what the hell is all that? Where is my shit at? Right there. Um, event begin play, that's the other thing. Um, like we were doing in the other example for the side scroller, we had a key and it does an event. I'm going to do basically the same thing. Um, actually, no, I'm going to go back to the side scroller. Just so it's a little bit easier to see and, and understand. Yeah, whatever. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Faster, faster, faster. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the the screen out there so we don't have as much noise to deal with here. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and trigger an event. So I'm going to edit my character and just like I did Q for um, doing the widget or one for the, the spell, I'm actually going to do basically we'll do number two here. So I'm going to do keyboard and I want the number two key. So now we, we, we are going to trigger an event by hitting number two. Again, this is going to be very ugly. It's going to be very crude, but it's just to kind of get the point across. Whenever I press the number two key, we can do this a couple different ways. Um, and you'd want to do this with the other player would have a collision box in front of them. So you could only do this if you were within range of them. So when you perform this attack, it's going to ask a variable of saying, is whatever in range? Is um, all actors of class and that particular actor, is that actor within range? If, if the answer is yes, then you can perform that. So you want to go through that whole sequence of, of confirming they're right there in front of you so that you can perform this attack, and then you grab them, pick them up, and throw them. You're essentially going to turn them into an inanimate object where you're now holding them in your hand, and then you're going to turn them into a projectile. So you're going to have the the player character that you're you're or the character you're fighting. You're going to have that blueprint, and then you're going to have the blueprint essentially for when you are picking them up. So that's another blueprint right there. So you're spawning in another actor and despawning the other actor, and then you're going to turn that in that other actor into a projectile. So you'll have three blueprints just for the same character. So this is going to be just like we did with the fire. We're going to do this in a really, really, really dumb way just to get a, a, a basic concept here. Go to the mesh. We're going to add a component. Um, definitely the wrong way. We're going to add a skeletal mesh and it's going to be another SK mannequin and we're going to tell it to use animation and asset and oh god I hate it whenever it does that stupid shit sorry I'm going to go to this we're going to make him do standing idle so now I want to put the parent socket of Grabber. <laughs> yes, this looks really stupid. Like I said, I just wanted you to see what it would take here. Um, so we're actually we can actually just uh, apply this to our number one attack just for now, just for making it a little bit easier. 
So like we did our projectile spawner, we want to essentially turn off real time so we can actually move this player around. So essentially you're going to pick them up and then throw them and just like we did before with our visibility um, we want to turn off visible turn back on real time and this is not going to be it's not going to look worth a damn but again like I said I just want to get the, the point across of what you're actually doing you set up the the, the, the pre part of it where can I do the attack? You're setting up the variable, can I do the attack? You're setting up a box collision in front of the character so that when you overlap, then yes, now I can do the attack. Then when you do the attack, you actually have to perform your own animation to grab them. Then you have to build an animation montage for the attack system. And then for were you grabbing them, you have to remove the player, the other actor from, from the scene and then now you have just spawned in another actor that is tied to sockets on your character and it's complicated but it's it's possible to do so what do we do here we hit our number one attack we did our sequence node here I'm just gonna grab these other things and get them out of the way so I have room to work with this is going to be messy because like I said, I'm going to delete this when we get done with this video an hour and a half ago. Um, we stop our movement, we start playing our animation, and then at the same time, we're going to turn our fire on. And also at the same time, I'm going to add another pin here. And I'm going to drag down here, add another delay in of one second just like the uh, or one point screw it one point one mild delay and then we want to grab a reference to I'm going to change the name of this body so I'm going to grab a reference to our body our corpse our target and I want to do set visibility and then control C, control V. We had two seconds on there, so let's add our delay in. And it's gonna be the same basic principle. We're just gonna set our visibility. We're gonna turn the target on, and then we're gonna turn it back off again. Unfortunately, this is a good way of doing it for not doing this in general, of showing things in your hand, like a weapon or whatever. Not a great way, but so we're going to turn on visibility and we're going to turn off visibility, and we have a two second timer there. So it's going to be basically the same thing. Oh, yes, kiss my ass. Please give me another error. Please, thank you. So now we go in here to play. We're running back and forth, and we're going to do our number one attack. So we would actually want to take that in 1.5. And then we would want to spawn a projectile from our projectile spawner location. That projectile we'd have to make based off of our character. So now we go to boom, and then you'd want to make a projectile. That projectile now needs to be, the model for the projectile needs to actually be the character. So if you did a um, blueprint class actor body bullet and then same thing as we did before add a skeletal mesh add in I don't know if skeletal meshes work correctly for this then you want to use a animation asset. God, you suck ass so much. I hate this stupid thing. No, I don't want to do that. And it's going to try to create its own new shit. And Come on, go to animations. Standing idle. 
body bullet. There we go. So now this is our projectile. So then we, we add in, um, add a component of projectile. And I can't spell for shit. Projectile movement. And then we would set up our bullet just like normal. Initial speed of 300, 300. Um, rotational <laughs> velocity uh, should bounce. Yeah, why not? Let's let it bounce. Um, auto activate. Yes. So this is absolutely horrible. But now, if you were to take that um, projectile, you would add it as a spawn actor from class. If you put it into the scene and hit play, we didn't set the direction here for it, but he's just going to fall through the ground. Um, let's actually make sure that our, our dude has collision. Block all. Well, save. So this is a very crude way of doing this. I wasn't trying to be perfect on it, but just kind of give the example. Let's go with a thousand and a thousand. Compile, save. So we didn't give a direction to it, but you can see that he's actually going to travel. So let's actually rotate it around. He's actually facing the wrong way anyway. So the projectile actually still goes through the ground because it's not configured correctly. But, yeah, you get the point. This is just part of the many different things you'd end up having to do. Um, in your actual character itself, um, you'd want to um, spawn actor from class. And then you could actually tie all this in with, um, with what you're doing here. When you turn the visibility off, then you would spawn actor from class. And yeah, it's, I could spend probably an hour, an hour and a half video just on that. So you get your spawn transform. You're going to bring this off here and you need to make transform. And then you've got to um, know what projectile you're using, which is the body bullet. And then your location, you need to get a, 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 a your projectile spawner. You need to get world location. Um, I'm I'm missing a step here somewhere, but spawn actor from class. You're going to get the location where to spawn it from, and um, from here. Actually, no, because we didn't do it off of a socket, so I don't need that. Um, but we're telling it where to spawn from, and I know there's more to this. I'm just um. So now, if I do this, <laughs> he's going the wrong way. So if I take the um timer let's drop it down to one second and let's go to our projectile spawner rotate that's actually not what I want to do um, I actually need to do that to the the projectile yeah I gotta do that to projectile not to the actual spawner the spawner doesn't really matter um, rotation, so want to get um, actually let's pull it off of our mesh. Get world rotation and plug that in there, so we have the the correct rotation of where we are, and that should fix it. We may have to fix the socket itself on. The skeleton. 
Okay, well, let's actually go back to my projectile spawner and rotate it back. See if that does make a difference now. Totally cheesy, absolutely cheesy. Yeah, that's that's absolutely wrong there. So go back into order on side scroller. It's still using the same mesh, I believe. Go to my skeleton, and I gotta sneeze. Uh, I go to my grabber, and um, let's actually change the preview controller to use specific animation. And we want to use the animation of two and magic five. I'm always tired. I was tired before I started this video. I was actually ready for a nap before I started it. I'm like, well, shit. I told everybody I would do it, and I need to stick to it. So now we're there, and I just need to rotate you 90 degrees. Should I wake up tired? <laughs> Fuck. I'll be here in, um... Let's see. This is... We're almost at September 1st. So, in just over a month, in the first um, week of October, I will be 50 years old. So, I'm no damn spring chicken here. Alright, so I'm walking this way. I do the animation. And you motherfucker going the wrong damn way again. It just does not want to cooperate. Let's see what happens if we go the other way. <laughs> Shit, you suck. And I don't need you on the map anymore. You can go away. Um, I've already rotated it 90 degrees. And let's look at it on here again. Because if I do this, and rotate, it, it should not matter the projectile spawner. It should not matter. Damn, you suck. So... Let's actually take away the rotation factor here and see what happens. It should be based off of the projectile spawner. Wow, you just absolutely suck. It's it's going towards the player every dang time. So I guess I do need to do that. Projectile spawner... Um, Hey, what the hell? We'll we'll try the um the location off of that one. Grit world rotation. I normally use the uh, the reference to the mesh for that. And it didn't seem to make a difference, so I see it's throwing it to the right, his right, and now it's throwing it to his right again. So, if I rotate this 90 degrees, no. Um, if I rotate it, if it's throwing it to his right, let's look at it again one more time, and then we'll get ready to get out of this video here, because I am getting freaking angry. It's throwing it to his right, so we need to rotate it to his left, which that would be... Rotate it 90 degrees to his left. Dyslexia is also really fun, too. That's why I have to keep breaking it down so many times. Is because I will... Oh, you just suck so much ass. Okay, you get the point. <laughs> it's just going to keep screwing with me. It's not drawing from the right thing here. So I'm going to break that link, and I'm actually going to use a um, reference to the... I think the arrow component would be usable there. Now if I hit Compile and Save, it's going to give me a freaking error. Get arrow component, yeah. You would think that would be the perfect thing to actually link off. If it's a freaking arrow, it's pointing in a set direction spring arm you could use that you know 
grab that on there and, and link that because the spring arm is pointing in a certain direction. You would think that would work as well for your rotation factor. Not throwing it to your left every damn time. Now it's throwing it in that direction every damn time. Okay, I don't give a damn anymore. <laughs> I got my point across. <coughs> oh. Okay, that one is done making its racket. Let's see. Just no freaking sound. But when I had the damn television up there, the movie screen up there, it was making sound. I could hear it behind the, the video. All right. I'm going to get the hell out of here. If you got questions, you can still catch me on uh, on Discord. And Ideal Studios, um, yeah, uh, Shad, um, you saw my, my multiplayer Steam project, right? You know what it is and, and what it is and what it be like, right? Um, for those who, which, let's close that. I don't need to have two projects open at the same time. Okay, you close and you open. Um, let's see if this kind of solves what you were asking about. I'm sorry I didn't get back to you on this one sooner because you were asking in Discord. Um, my simple multiplier okay, this is the one that I, I, I sell for 20 bucks. Alright, yeah, I'm going to show this real quick and then I'm, I'm going to get out of this, this stream here. I don't need the plugins. You can close. Um, but yeah, there are two plugins that are associated with this particular thing. I have links to, to find it. And that would be the um, advanced sessions. So you get the advanced Steam sessions. And um, it's all part of, you know, a little thing. All right, but if you're leaving out, then and have a good one. But like I said, I've got links to that. So this, this here, the uh, simple Steam multiplayer, the way it works as if you hit play and this is going to open it up in a standalone window I'm sorry I don't want to make this sound it's like another shameless plug for my simple multiplayer steam system but it works I mean I made this over a year ago and I've been using this for every damn project that I make you can see it loads of steam information you get your steam username and avatar in the upper right hand corner um, unfortunately it does only work with the steam subsystem that's the way I've got this set up and it's just I always use steam but the sad part of it is, is it relies on Steam region. So if I'm in, I'm on the east coast of the United States. So if you're in New York, no problem. You're in Florida, no problem. New Jersey, no problem. Washington State, no, no way. You're on the wrong coastline, and you can't join because you're on the other coastline. It's you're in a different Steam region. If you're in Europe, Asia, whatever you're in a different Steam region, so you won't be able to connect to my game. And it's done to keep ping rates low, so as you're you're looking through hosted games, so like if you're, there's a bunch of people that are playing this game and that you've created, and you want to find a game to play, you hit Find, and then Find Lobby, and it will create a whole big old list of everybody that's got games going here, and then it'll show, um, currently right now, I've only got this configured to show the name, and I had at one point the ping, but it doesn't show up correctly. But you'll find the name of the server and then a join button. So right next to the join button, you'll just hit join and it'll go right in. Or if you want to create your own game and you want to be the host for it, you come over here to host game and put whatever you want in for your, your game name, hit make, and then it goes right into the actual game itself. And now all your buddies can join in and play. And you could all run around and look at each other. I'm like, hey, look, I'm a white robot. Hey, look, you're a white robot. And everybody can be the same robot. The whole point of why I made this is because I needed some way of just getting a hosting game. Come on, let's, let's check this out. I want you to check this out. Okay. Okay, do you just want to look at a damn video on YouTube of it? Or do you want to get into the freaking game and run around? Um, so this is actually a standalone system. There are there is a plugin you have to get. I have the link for and they, they update it for every version. Unfortunately the, the plugin's not built in. You have to download it and install it, but that's no problem. You know, I stand behind all that crap on how to install it. Plus I got videos on doing it too. But 
right now with me having this hosted, if if anybody else wanted to join, then it's no problem. They could join. And like I said, I've, I put in a simple escape menu, hit the escape key, and you can either go back to the main menu or you can resume game. And that's it. The exit game button works. I left the Technoax logo in here in case you also want to go to Technoax and get music to put in the background. Um, you don't have to use it. If you're not using his music, then that's fine. But, you know, this is... This is the asset pack that I sell for 20 bucks. You hit the escape uh, in game button, works just fine. Um, I did leave Red Man in there, and all that is is uh, if you want to have one person be a red character, and, or you want everybody to be red instead of white or whatever else, I left that one in there because a previous version I had it set to where when you first spawn in, you were red. Everybody was red. So that's still hidden in there. It works on every version of Unreal Engine 4 that I know of. Um, at least from 4.17, 18, 19. And I know it works in 4.20, but I, I'm only going to run one version of the editor at a time. I'm not running 4.20 and 4.19 because I was running into a lot of problems. So I'm going to stick to 4.19 for right now until another version of 4.20 comes out good enough to use. Maps-wise, just lobby map and main menu map. If you decide to use this and build your game based off of this, um, things to remember are when you go to edit, you want to go to project settings, and when you go to package, and I package it, my games, almost exclusively by going into development. I don't do a full packaging. So you click on packaging here. You see I'm using a development build, and it works, and it, take, it does everything I need. So you come over here in packaging, there's this little arrow right here, click that, scroll down, and you'll see here a list of maps to include in a packaging build. Open that up, and that's where your main menu map and your lobby map are going to be. Well, if you add in another map instead of the lobby map for everybody to go to, then all you have to do is click on that, go to your project file. I know mine's in my documents and Unreal Projects, and then you find the actual um, project you're working on, like Destructo, and um, content, and maps, and go to that location, select the actual map file itself in there, and now whenever you go to package, you can have 35 freaking maps in your game, but unless you put them right here, they're not even going to be compiled when you do a build of your, your project. So you save from having all those extra freaking maps in your game that waste hard drive space on the uh, the install. So that's uh, one way you can use to trim your project down and only include the maps that you need to include, which is going to drastically cut down on your file size. Um, full rebuild, I always leave that checked for distribution. All of my games I package in development mode and it works a lot easier. So if you've packaged anything before, then you're okay. But you know you got to have um, uh, Visual Basic, I think it was, installed, of a certain package of that installed and, and whatnot. And I've got all my shit working for 419. I don't want to do it all over again for 420. Because normally whenever I do just 420 or just 419 or just whatever, I uninstall, I delete all the folders, I get rid of any trace of Unreal Engine and Epic Games and all that stuff from my hard drive and start from scratch all over again so it's a clean, fresh install. And I'm just not going to do that right now. Got too much utter shite going on. So yeah, that's that's one thing to remember when you're, you're getting ready to package. And then what I do is I go here to File, Package Project, and for Windows 64-bit, because that's what 90% of what I'm doing, 99.99% of everything that I'm doing is on that. But And under build configuration, it's development. If you just want to zip it up, you can do that, and then just send it off to somebody, but they're going to get your full project. Whenever you do um, package project for Windows 64-bit, anybody with Windows 64-bit now can play the game, but they don't get the assets for free. Um, you can also come in here into your project settings and go to supported platforms and you can uncheck supported platforms and go through here and uncheck everything that you don't want to work. If you only want to work on Windows then uncheck all these boxes right here. If you want to work with Android 
Linux, iOS, Mac, tvOS, HTML5, desktop, Win, Mac, Linux, whatever. Yeah, it's fine. All of my stuff for my regular stuff, I only do for Windows. I am an old fidgety fart, and I don't care about anything but my Windows. I'm crotchety and old. All right, guys. Any other questions before I kick out of here? Because it's um, I don't want to try to keep my streams no more than about an hour, and we're almost at the three-hour mark. That or that. Like I said, I just finished it, all that project. Five, four, three, two, one, gone. So that project we were just using is absolutely gone now. Um, yep, and testing, that's where I was screwing around with stuff. Not a problem, guys. Like I said, you got any more questions, just hit me up on Discord. Um going to be up for a little bit longer. I might actually um, play some World of Warships a little bit. World of War shit by Horde Gaming. Um, so yeah, I mean, if anybody is on the North American server or on World of Warships and wants to division up, let me know. If you're on North American region, you know, like whatever region on that it takes for Sniper Elite 4, no problem. We can play some Sniper Elite 4. Um, that kind of stuff. Um, Sniper Elite 4 is actually pretty fun in co-op. Whenever you got a couple good players that you can just sit there and, and work as a good sniper team. But, yeah. Cool. Topic for a different time. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And thanks again for anybody who has pitched in, donated, bought the uh, simple multiplayer, that kind of stuff. Um... It's helped. It's allowed me to buy the camera that will be here tomorrow and the new headset and the Bluetooth dongle. Um, I did do the redneck modification to my chair because the freaking gas ram kept collapsing on me. Um, I'm trying to get things set up so that whenever everything gets here tomorrow, um, I'll be able to set up everything. I'm going to probably need some help doing some test streams so that... Um, uh, I can verify the voice is working for people who are joining the stream and everything else. So, y'all take care. And I'll be on Discord. And like I said, if you want to play something, let me know. All right. Take care.